Join the story of an Imperial tech trader by helping our Indiegogo campaign reach $10,000. It's not just the system, Dick. It's the name. Hey guys. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hey guys. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hey, happy new year. Hey, happy new year. Hey, talk about so. our favorite movies of the year, probably from best to worst, right? No, uh, our top five uh, best movies of the year, right? Oh, just best. Okay, I, I did not. Know five, four, three, two, best. one. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I do have, I think, three honorable mentions uh, here, and um, uh. So I'm just gonna uh, go through them. Uh, no, no, who's gonna go first? Who's gonna go first? I think uh, Charlie could go first. Yeah, His uh, honorable fine. mentions, at I least. Actually, I can mention the honorable mentions. Yes. Honorable mentions. All right. I just wanted to make it official, you know. Uh, okay. Mm. Um, honorable uh, mention number one is one of the first movies I saw this year, Bell. Uh, it, it was a, uh, a feast for the eyes, a grand spectacle. Uh, but not as good a, uh, as an anime th film as I was uh, hoping it to be. But I guess I got everything I wanted. I, I didn't appreciate the teenage drama, but it was still beautiful. It was a 2021 movie anyway. <laughs> yeah, so borderline. Anyway, uh, what was the second one? Oh, yeah. Uh, Pompo the Cinephile. Um, I, I was just uh, having a blast as I was watching this uh, in the theater because of uh, the story we're writing, so I related to it, absolutely. But as I, as I, uh, more, the more I thought about it afterwards, I realized it's not as good as uh, most anime movies I watch. S but still uh, great to watch, uh, even, especially if uh, you, um, uh, someone does, like, uh, creative writing or something. And finally, um, I, I, this uh, I just rewatched this uh, yesterday. Uh, honorable mention: Sonic the Hedgehog two. Hey! Hey, um, <laughs> actually, I got an idea. How about um, we all take turns for like every like every like movie we do, then we pass it to the yeah. Other person. We each do our number fives first. Um, no, no, uh, yeah. So now one of us in Callum okay. has to our honorable mention. Right. Um, moving on to why uh, Sonic two didn't make the list. Um. I realized that uh, it, it is a great video game movie. It's uh, for those of you who don't know, it's become it's become the uh, highest grossing uh, video game movie of all time. And apparently, Paramount and I mean, Paramount is beating out Disney in terms of likability with yeah, both go to Top Gun, Gun Sonic. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a Sonic movie done absolutely right. Um, I just. Some of the comedy uh, elements uh, is geared to, a little too much towards children. So it, it gets all the fan service right, uh, but uh, some of the, uh, it's geared a little uh, too much uh, uh, towards kids. So I didn't uh, quite like that as much. Um, this is the second best uh, video game movie released this year. Uh, uh, I'll touch on that uh, with the first later. So... Should I segue, segue into my number five or no, no? No, remember, um, now we, me and Calum, either of us have to do our honorable mentions, and then, uh, and uh, then uh, you'll go to your number five, and then okay. we'll go to our number four, three, and press on. Right. Okay, I guess I'll go up. Um, so my first honorable mention would have to be probably like One Piece Red film. Um, I definitely have not seen like one piece in probably years probably three years and i've only seen like 50 episodes in the first season i have not seen the simpsons style like seasons or like mcu or guard i've not gotten into that so it is remarkably refreshing that it's completely fresh in my mind that it's about shanks's daughter and that it really, and all the characters that have been going on for 20 seasons, 20 damn seasons and more that I don't need to know. All I just need to know is about Shanks' daughter and Luffy's relationship, which a bit kind of gave me an Anakin and Ahsoka vibe and an Obi-Wan vibe with Shanks being like Obi-Wan. But, and I definitely do relate a bit with, um, with, um, with, um, Luda, yeah, Luda 
Luda's like depression, her anxiety, and her the whole world on her crashing down in front of her and her going crazy, and especially when I'm not gonna go spoilers, but how a, a, a part in the past had tra- traumatized her and she went crazy, and the whole story will go her go out of that insanity. Um, the other honorable mention I would say is probably um um yeah um um the cinephile um yeah the creative writing definitely the, the juices the flow the flow definitely i get that i do relate with like as we all do we're on our like creative path with our story and it is definitely enticing out uh, to see a meta perspective like um um an animation like animated characters filming a movie within a movie like you know it's Mm -hmm. and i would probably say the third one i would say is i'm just give me a minute if you have more than three you can um oh i am i think i have a third one i think i have a third one and um you don't have to say three so i would say it's probably um, uh, I, I would say, um, oh, oh, um, I would say, uh, okay. Um, um, <laughs> You're leaving us in such anticipation there. <laughs> the, the tension, the tension, it's too much. Okay, um, just honorable mentions for you, Brooks. All right. Uh, Tom, do you have any honorable mentions? I have three. Okay. Um, I uh, also would like to give uh, Sonic uh, two an honorable mention, just showing off my Lego Sonic set that I have. <laughs> yeah, I have the whole Lego Sonic set. Um, yeah, Sonic 2 was a brilliant movie. I mean, I liked the first film, but it was rather... Uh, I keep dropping the fits. Yeah. Um, uh, it was rather uh, mediocre. It had a very uh, formulaic um, structure to it. Like, if you've seen something like the Smurfs or, like, Hop, you'll be very familiar with this kind of thing. Um but there was some fan service there, and any potential for a sequel seemed very promising. And boy, did they deliver on that promise. Um, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Still a few things holding it back, though. But still, I... Yeah, I felt... Um, I, can I just... I, I, yeah, 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 go ahead. Chime in. I, di- I did think that the original uh, film's plotline was a little more creative uh, and um, original. Uh Enough. Uh, because like because I'm uh, I'm a fan. I, I knew uh, Eggman was gonna betray Knuckles from a mile away. Because it's based off the second bit in the third game. Yeah, and second they, and third. they didn't do a whole lot. Um, they didn't do like enough new things that I, I, I don't know. Uh, I I think maybe they could have uh, done a little better, but I, I just uh, it was very predictable for me. Great right stuff. So. Okay. Continue. Anyway. Um, so, uh, it was a great film on and all, and, um, some bits could have been cut out, but honestly, it's a great film as it is. Other honorable mentions, uh, The Northman, made by, uh, Eggers, um, this is the same filmmaker who made The Lighthouse, which is a film that I simultaneously love, uh, from a filmmaking standpoint, yet simultaneously disgusted by, um, and, um, The that North- was, uh, Jeremy John's, uh, favorite movie of the year. Aye, aye, I can see why. Um, the Northman is made by the same director who made that movie. Um, so it's um, it's a sort of a contemporary outlook, and it delves into a story that's based on the Viking era, and it's most likely the story that would have later inspired Shakespeare's Hamlet. Um, wow. It's a traditional Viking revenge story, and they really delve deep into like Viking lore and um, all the thematics of uh, vengeance and um, they, they do delve into some aspects about um, maybe there's more to life than just revenge, but nowhere near as much as they did with the Finland saga. Finland saga, I, yeah, and also which is coming up, the se- second season is coming up January. Yes, yeah, the Finland saga is going to be great. And Finland saga yeah, I the- put in with an honorable mention that I just thought of. Oh, okay. Um, I'll say um, an honorable mention is The King's Men. The King's Men. Ah, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, I totally forgot that that came out this year. Well, <laughs> this is like a prequel to the King's Men series that is a, uh, a deconstruction of James Bond and the spy genre. And 
I feel like taking it to World War One, which this decade, like, or in the past decade, have been definitely. We since we've done a lot of World War Two movies, I guess we're trying to do more World War One movies. You know, pay tribute to that war too, and it really, what it, I mean. It was, of course, a spy film, but it was also a World War One film at heart, too. It really did delve into um, how the spy era, how, and even Rasputin, especially with that infamous, like, music video, um, the rest, yeah. And even the, even a person died in, it, like, like, in, like, in, in the, in the war that, in it, they treat it like how the World War One. So this established the Kingsman organization and how, um, and how, and how this, the Kingsmen came together. How they got the Arthur mythology into their baked into the co- the DNA of their identity, and how they got the mansion. How all that was established. Okay, you can continue, Gal. All right. Um, my last honorable mention: everything, everywhere, all oh, at yeah. once. I have never got. I got the chance to see that one. And oh, there's... yeah, that's, uh, you should. It's a better multiverse uh, movie than Doctor Strange. I yes! don't doubt that. I still, I seriously don't doubt that. Yeah, it delves more into the multiverse than the actual <laughs> Doctor Strange film. Um, Remember, fantastic, fantastic, straight up in the Swiss cheese yeah. or spaghetti yeah. and. Um, doesn't yeah no no just, just because someone loses their way doesn't mean they're lost forever. I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. Just want to talk to him. <laughs> no, no, come I back first. Come back. To... <laughs> I love that movie. I love it. you guys bastardizing. You will pay for it. Uh, uh, Wait, uh, what movie is that from? It's referencing I Family I was, Guy. I got that from. I got that from Family Guy. Oh, yeah. oh, right, right. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on with my number five. Yes, yes, do that. Okay, number five is a movie I just rewatched just minutes ago uh, to f- uh, figure out uh, its place in here. And that is, uh, by a very slim margin, uh, the best uh, video game movie this year, a little better than Sonic 2, Uncharted. I Really? Yeah, um, it has its flaws, no doubt. Um, Tom Holland and Someone is looking at the picture. Yeah, Tom Holland and Sully uh, and uh, Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg are both too young to uh, play Nate and Sully for sure. But uh, it does do a great action, and I guess I, when compared to Sonic Two. I think I like it a little more because it's just geared more towards uh, adults and teens. So... Of course, that bias. The bias. Yeah, maybe I'm being a little uh, biased, but yeah, I I, I went back and forth on uh, which ones. uh, And I came to Uncharted um, because it's just more realistic and grounded, I guess. Uh, I I don't know. I I guess I relate more... uh, uh, I, I can relate more to it. Uh, Fair enough. It's it's debatable uh, which one of it, it's it, I, I could be wrong and change my mind about uh, which one of these two uh, is the better one, but uh, for today, I, I'm going with Uncharted. Okay. Fair guess, enough. Okay. Who are we to argue so with you? It's back to me. It, five. I'm number five. It's not one of the flaws. Like uh, um, there's uh, so um, some guy get a, gets his throat slit. There's no blood. PG-13. Uh-huh. Well, so. here's something that actually has more blood in it, and it's number five, Bullet Train. I think that <laughs> I, I am convinced that a person just asked the director, like David Lennett, that um, I dare you, you can make an entire movie based on chance alone, and that everything correlates with each other by chance alone. And everything still connects. I am, and that, and he said, challenge accepted. And also, how many plot twists in this movie is insane. I know. Like, I know. Uh, it's, like, it's a true work of art. And also, especially it. like with the climax and how absolutely chaotic it is. Like, 
a t entire bullet train going out of control, crazy, and plummeting onto the ground, and somehow I'm not Carver. Yeah, like uh, uh, it's, um, I think the cast is definitely great. All of them serve serve a purpose, and since this is a Sony film, the Japanese stuff is definitely definitely heavily influenced to this, like. Especially with the Japanese version of I Need a Hero. I'm only on the... Yeah. 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 Some of this is just yeah, some of this is not. But I really, I, I really love the the frame rate. How things like how like one character, one character like meets another, and their entire backstory is dedicated to hell to a fucking water a bottle is dedicated to them. Yeah, and yeah. the entire it's a kid show to Thomas the Train, like for these, like um, yeah, like yeah, I take yourself seriously, and like it, it I mean. And even the whole villain, like he is very like he's not he's not like a one note villain, but he no, isn't exactly that. I mean, he definitely has some depth to him. He has a lot of depth to him. But the whole reason he's after the hero is because Ryan Reynolds killed his wife instead of him. <laughs> like, 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 why am I even after you? I don't know. It's bad. It's like I don't know. And like, I don't know. So, and the. the well, that's your number five. Long story short. <laughs> All right, my number five. Um, the Batman. Okay. Now, um, uh, yeah. in terms of superheroes, I've always been rather fond of Batman, and. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and who hasn't? Exactly, yeah. And um, there's been various adaptations of this character, and people are fascinated with this character because he's very relatable and he's a, an icon of endurance. And here is an adaptation by Matt Reeves in which Batman, the world's greatest detective from Detective Comics, is actually doing a significant amount of detective work, even down to the mundane stuff. Way to put it. Oh, yeah. And this particular version of Batman really. Um, captures Gotham City as a character. A lot of people say Gotham City is a character in and of itself. That you got the atmosphere, the crime ridden valley. You talk about the Dark Knight where it's just Chicago. Maybe. Yeah, I felt um that movie was a little too much like the Christopher Nolan films. Yeah. Hmm. I, mean, I mean in the first Batman begins, you could definitely tell it's Arkham. I mean it was Gotham. Yeah, I, I, I liked it, uh, but I, I just uh, thought it was uh, too much like the Nolan films. It also, gets how I didn't like the race. Riddler, I couldn't see his outfit. It was just all, it looked so black to me that I, 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 I legitimately couldn't tell it was dark green. Uh, so much so that uh, I, when I reviewed it on TikTok, follow me at Wedding Charlie, um, uh, someone uh, in the comment section uh, had to point it out to me uh, in a separate video they made that it, it's actually a dark green. I don't like. You're a TikTok oh. sign, Charlie. Um, no, it's not. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, look. Overall, I had fun with it. Uh, action, solid. Character developments, uh, great. And oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look. If you're gonna take inspiration from uh, one side of Batman, Christopher Nolan's a uh, uh, good good choice. Better than uh, Joel Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> Bat card. Never leave the cave without it. <laughs> um, don't worry. There's no Bat credit card in this movie. We guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, there's no Bat credit card. And, it's also, and honestly, that cemented people's thought of, like, Robin as a character. And if you've seen the comics, you've seen Batman. Oh, I just Bat realized it. How his relationship to Robin, the three Robins, <laughs> Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, um, Tim Drake, and the bastard one, Damian Wayne. And also the yeah, other uh, I just timeline. Something really like with Talia, <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Charlie. There has not been, uh, 
since 1997, when Batman and Robin, that was the last time uh, uh, Robin has been seen on screen in live action. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's uh, why. If, if, yeah, I, if this were like J if Jason Todd, that would be a way different movie. Like, it would be Joker beating him to death and then him coming back to life with Talia and Ra's al Ghul and him becoming yeah. the Red Hood, a, a, a vigilante murderer. Anyway, uh, this film, um, interestingly, um, uh, focuses on the Riddler, a uh, villain who hasn't had much screen time since the, the ever since the ever so wonderful Jim Carrey had uh, oh, a yeah. fun. Honestly, I like the Jim Carrey one a bit, bit more. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed it when I was a kid. He, uh, the guy that's been <laughs> part of my childhood. Oh yeah. Um, so um, this version of the Riddler. Um, oh, right. Uh, I, I, oh, I, 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 not even. Um, so this version of the Riddler is uh, very intimidating and works well within the context of this more detective-oriented. Uh, I mean, when he's movie. on the ass, mm -hmm. when he's off, like no, 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 no. no! Oh, I thought you were supposed to be the smart one. Cast this guy as the Riddler, please. Um, and there's other details that I really like. There's some distracting elements, uh, such as like the occasional mention of like a white privilege or something like that. But oh, it, it didn't. But at wow. least it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It didn't ruin the film or anything like that. There were also a few um, uh, parts of the film that kind of relied on convenience ex machina, like Batman comes and across. Even in my video about. Batman victims of the Stanley. I have I have talked about this. I have talked about this guy claim that um, that the Batman is a local liberal fantasy, you know? which it kind of is. But given to that, it at the same time at least it's still Batman as a character. I mean, it could be worse. It could be Jake Skywalker. It could have been Mister Fantastic. It could have been like given bastardized so badly, but he wasn't. Ever. So, and also, anyway. it's like, a, and even from Anomaly Inc., who said he he bitched about it, but to say that he's a white guy, so he says he's gonna fuck you to that. <laughs> That's even Catwoman's like, what are you under that mask? I'm Bruce <laughs> Wayne, I'm a 1% guy. I'm 1%. It's Shovel Face. <laughs> um, anyway, long story short, I'm Batman, great film. White. And <laughs> white man. <laughs> I'm a one percent, one hundred percent. I care about justice. <laughs> that's, that's white it. man, white man. <laughs> yeah, no, the one percent, the one hundred percent white man. <laughs> that should be the title of that film. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Number four. Is it number four for you, Charlie? Oh, uh, yeah, that's all you want. I have to say. Yep. We need to move on at some point. Oh. <laughs> um, my number four is of um, a movie that uh, that's not out on video yet, um, and that is One Piece Film Red. Oh. oh. Yeah. So. Okay. I, 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 clearly, I like it a little more than you, Brooks, because uh, I've been following uh, One Piece since I was in middle school. I, I don't take offense to that. I understand. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so even though I've been following uh, I, it ever since I was in middle school, that's not uh, so that's not totally true. Um, I can even see on your poster. I can even see the poster in your background. You show us that. Yeah, like. Yeah. yeah I can see that. I can. Yeah, that's a, it's a yeah. cross between. Let me guess, it's you're uh, connecting all the characters, and um, yep, Luffy's definitely Jack, Nami's definitely Elizabeth, and um, Sanji would be uh, Will. I guess that makes sense. But also, no. what about? Yeah, yeah. also He's crossed uh, with uh, parts of the Caribbean, and also uh, those other stickers are from Uncharted Four. I got those with my collector's edition of Uncharted 4. You're just uh -huh. obsessed with adventurous pirates, aren't you, Charlie? Yeah. Um, sort of. Sort of, yeah. I am Still learning this uh, from my beach house, my family beach house. So there's that. That's true. I can't blame you for that. You yeah. don't have to get personal stuff. Okay, right. so about One Piece Film Red. Um, I really liked it, uh, even though um, I, I, I was a little disappointed how... 
uh, it wasn't a story about Shanks uh, specifically, but more so uh, his adopted daughter. Well, it's not actually confirmed. It's not whether that's a bastard child or not. Like, it's a love affair child or not. It's not confirmed. Yeah, it, yeah, if right. If he had sex with a queen or something or something. That's just, yeah. Yeah, but... I, I I love it all, all uh, simply uh, because uh, great action. Uh, I, I do uh, like the substitute storyline we got. Um, uh, beautiful animation, especially towards the ending. Um, she even has a bit resemblance of Shanks. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's interesting to see her character developments. And um, the only real downsides uh, for me that uh, keep it from uh, getting uh, beating out number three, uh, which uh, one that later uh, is another anime movie, but um, uh, the downsides is that uh, it, it I don't like how the beautiful music is used as a weapon. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, also, um, it didn't help. And uh, something. What about Top Musica? That was fantastic. Yeah. yeah uh, the, oh, the music was uh, a, a sublime. Uh, I'm not disputing that. Well, I mean, as a weapon. I mean, pop music is like the ultimate, like, doomsday device. Maybe, but uh, I just uh, I wasn't appreciative. Also, it didn't help that um, for my viewing, when I saw it in the theater, uh, the the songs were dubbed, were subbed, or were subtitled. I, I My friend and I uh, had to uh, read the subtitles uh, at the bottom if we wanted to catch it. And so after a while, we just gave up and just focused on uh, what was happening on screen. I got it. How about everyone who's talking about their movies, they spoil, but the other person doesn't when they talk about their... when, Or if they talk about the same movie, then they'll both spoil at the same time. Like, you know, like because mm -hmm. I spoiled a bit before, you spoiled, you know. We spoil each other. Uh, yes, we're, yeah. we're really back about this, right? Okay. Uh, we gotta talk about the movie somehow. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, where was I? Uh, music is a weapon. Uh, what was the third? All oh, right. Um, my third gripe is that uh, because I'm not completely caught up uh, with where the anime sh uh, show is, I was just a little lost uh, as to. Uh, uh, what was um, what exactly was happening? Where the uh, not what was happening? I was a little lost on where the Straw Hat crew stood, like in the series. But luckily, uh, my friend uh, who got me into uh, One Piece, uh, I saw it with. So uh, he has been filling, uh, staying up to date with it. So he filled me in. I'm just. I'm a little disappointed that he needed to do that. Uh, a, a truly great film that shouldn't need to do. I shouldn't need to get a film done. But overall, uh, still beautiful anim animation, action, um, uh, plot line, uh, and I get to see uh, Shanks in action. So yeah, uh, I, I had fun. Uh, I, I think I, 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 I forget if I saw the movie on my birthday or not. I, I think I might have. Mm. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting that mixed up with my number three pick. All wait, right. No, wait, so me, I'm going next. I remember. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're going next, Brooks. Okay. Um, <laughs> my number four pick, I've been a little bit deciding in my head as he's going on. So I think I've finally decided. So this is a movie I saw recently. It's um, all was all silent on the Western Front. All quiet this on the Western movie. Front on okay. Netflix. Perfect. This movie is fucking brutal this movie like when you're in the war when you're in the deep trenches it is absolutely unhinged when it shows you blue. it will not hesitate it will not it will not it will not it will not keep you breather it will just even when you think and when the war was over when it was like when oh, there was prepared geez. the kaiser ordered for one last attack before the <sighs> war was ended and then it still what well, was very uncomfortable, mm. and I, the characters as you go along, they all die one by one, like Brooks one style, like Halo Reach style, mm. but this time in an actual realistic setting. I mean, the landscape and the the uh, and the the, the, the framing is so beautiful. Mm. German 
like this is my first German film and I really enjoy the director's saw. I love that Baron Zemo and also he, from Inglorious Bastards, the, the actor was in this movie as like the de- the liberal wing of the German the German the German Reich. Is it that mm-hmm. the time was the German Reich? Uh, he was definitely uh, on the German side, and yes, I was pleasantly surprised to yes. see Zemo in the film. But yes, I, yes, but was it called the German Reich back then? Um, German Reich. It must have been right because, of course, because there's a third Reich, the second Reich, the first Reich. This yeah. might have been the first or second. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not sure, but by the time, like by the end, is absolutely uncomfortable. It, mm. Like it literally is what Levi told. To, no, said to, said to Irwin in Attack on Titan, give up on your dream and charge your death, and it literally ends on the character's dead corpse. And the landscape. Um, and, Mark, like, do not buckle or yield when faced with the harsh cruelty of this world. Yes, and like they, they're not hesitant. Like how they like the corpses, they like chop them up, and then they like they're like animal meat, and then they. And they put them in the bags, and they have to store them up. My, my. You know, Brooks, oh. it's quite the kawinky dink. All Quiet on the Western Front is also my number four pick. Um, no, thanks. Wow. Uh, great. Oh, yeah. Pick. Uh, I don't have anything to add here, because I've never heard or seen, seen the movie, so... Uh, I've actually seen a previous adaptation uh, back in a history class long ago, uh, back at high school. Um, and I will say... Uh, I've been hearing that this particular version is quite different, but doesn't differentiate from the source material. Like some of the like the specifics on the events and what people did is very different for, compared to previous adaptations. But this adaptation actually kind of benefits from the differences because it takes the time to explore these different uh, fa- uh, type uh, um, events that happened uh, all through the war. And even though some people might say it's it's not fully historically accurate, it still does drive home some things that really happened in history, such as the fact that uh, before the armistice peace at 11 uh, a.m., um, the uh, Kaiser, in his absolute arrogance, decided, you know what, we're not going down as cowards. I want my soldiers to die like men. That really did happen? Wow. Or some, something like that. It, it must have been. Um, I heard that they didn't use soldiers so much as they just used up all their artillery because they couldn't be bothered dragging it home or something like that. Um, so it was kind of liber- artistic liberations. Yeah, yeah. Art- artistic liberations. Um, so it's quite a bit different from the source material, but it doesn't d- 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 uh, go too out of the yes. path from the source material. It, it still has the characters. It still has Paul. It's still has that really tragic ending. And basically, it's the kind of film where people are bought into this... It is this, a tale uh, told by an idiot, both sound and theory <laughs> signifying nothing. Yeah, it's a story about these people who are brought up in society to think of this patriotic lie, only to have like the harsh reality of seeing men as equal to them, like even their enemies, just that whole reality just smack them in the face and there's this this brilliant drama like there's a scene yeah. where in the intensity of battle like Paul is fighting off this French soldier and in desperate he's trying to kill him off but then seeing this humanity in him he tries his best to try to revive him even though he's beyond gone at this point having been stabbed several times in the chest put like freaking dirt in his mouth yeah. like and um many more scenes like that and um Again, it's shot beautifully, beautifully shot. And there's some brilliant contrast between the intensity and gruesomeness of the warfare with the uh, the silent, the spoiled silence, as it were, of like the rich people. Because when you really boil down the war, it's really just these uh, rich folks just uh, um, Again, negotiating on, on the You're not your yeah. pawn to be sacrificed! Yeah, and even they acknowledge every second we waste in these offices, another soldier dies. And it's a really haunting, yet beautiful ending. Um, so, and, and, uh, and what makes this more profound is that this was made in Germany. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Imagine if the, the Nazis did win the war, and what would this story be like if it, 
if oh, Hitler bad. cinema did reign to the world, and what would it be like? Well, we might not have gotten the film called Downfall, another great German film, yeah, by the way. Yeah, but we definitely could have gotten this still, because it's still yeah, a German I know. Film. And I- I'm glad that um, this movie pre- uh, presents, like, a realistic war, mm. um, and um, uh, soldiers who were kind of duped into um, uh, mm. uh, serve into uh, enlisting. No, and, actually, uh, you know what? That could mean if the Nazis did win, then it could have been full propaganda. This movie could have been like a war cry, like completely yeah. romanticized, and like a, it could have been like it could have, since Hitler did fight in World War One, so I guess he would have like drummed up so much that it would have been beloved. It would be classic, hundred percent loved by everyone, not horrifying at all. Mm. There's a I remember there was I think there's a mini series called The Rise of Evil with Scottish actor Robert Carlyle playing as Hitler during the time period that you mentioned, Brooks. Right. I, I'm glad it uh, sheds a light on um, uh, the realities of war versus uh, what the army tries to sell in its uh, commercials. Uh, 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 people need to uh, know what they're getting se- themselves into uh, before they enlist. So. Yes. Okay, number three, the best anime movie I saw this year. I mulled it over a lot, and I decided that what I saw on my birthday in August, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Oh, yeah, I heard this one. I've seen, I I almost wanted to see it. Awkward title aside, this is an amazing uh, Dragon Ball movie. Uh, I'm actually, it's probably the first one I'm, contemplating uh buying and i haven't bought a dragon ball uh movie or dvd uh, in years not even dragon ball broly nope nope yeah. i haven't uh i ha- i haven't bought anything since z so i i, I got some uh, uh old dvds uh in my basements uh i'm not doing anything with them but uh uh, I stopped buying them because it just kept getting re-released over and over and over and over again. I got uh, sick and tired of it. Uh, so when it up I understand with, that. So. I've been the same way, then. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so super superhero. Again, awkward title. Yeah, um, especially with the superhero craze. Um. Yeah, uh, it's great because uh, it. It gives Gohan uh, his own story, which I loved. Uh, I. Uh, thinking back on it, uh, I've, I think I've always uh, really admired Gohan. I, I mean, Vegeta is my favorite, but Gohan holds a special place in my heart, uh, I guess, because uh, he's a half-breed. And uh, he uh, he didn't really, uh, I, I guess I liked him because uh, he didn't have his father for a whole year. And uh, I, I can't relate to that, but... Um, I admire uh, the uh, training he went through uh, and how he uh, really uh, deep t- uh, dug down deep uh, to find uh, his uh, awakened hid- hidden powers and uh, become the warrior he is today. So to see him uh, get his own movie uh, is uh, really exciting, and um, I-, I feel like he definitely deserves it. And uh, it's... Uh, it- it's a grand spectacle how the Red Ribbon Army um, rises up um, with their uh, two new androids. And I, I, I do think um, the the first uh, the first half or so uh, is a, a little slow. Uh, how Piccolo infiltrates uh, the RR base, but it's uh it's still um uh, entertaining enough uh, to see and they even get uh pan involved uh so she uh she throws down well too and uh trunks and goten uh, uh contribute to although they may they turn gotenks one of my, one of my other favorite characters into a joke which i really didn't like uh, they bring back fat gotenks like, come on. No, no. What kind of name is Gotenks, anyway? I know that they're all named after some some object on Earth, but what is a Gotenks, anyway? Who knows? Uh, the, the name of some fanatic of tanks. Combined. 
There's uh, trunks. Uh, there's go. Anyway, um, I loved uh, the new forms Go uh, Gohan and Piccolo gets. Uh, it's uh, oh, another new form. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but it's so great. Piccolo goes big again. Oh, at least Piccolo. At least someone different. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I never, I didn't grow up uh, watching the, the tail end of Dragon Ball, so I actually missed that. Um, so, but and seeing it here when he goes big and orange, uh, and he just calls himself Orange Piccolo, um, uh, i.e. Golden Frieza. So keep things simple. Of course, of course it's um, it's uh, it, it, it makes for one hell of an uh, action-packed ending. Uh, Cell Max. Um, Fans were pretty conflicted on uh, uh, how they brought back Sal as Sal Max, but I liked it. Uh, I think uh, he, uh, I, yeah, I think he worked good as a big hulking monster. Uh, a lot of fans, uh, including my uh, my best friend, I saw it with, um, who's a lifelong Dragon Ball fan. The two of us, yeah, he wasn't he, he wasn't crazy about it because uh, he. Cell Cell Max here was present as kind of a mindless uh, uh, brute, but I, I thought it, it was okay. I thought it was uh, still great, and and Gohan takes him down by himself this time. He doesn't need his dad anymore, or anyone. He does it all by himself. So I thought that was a, a great uh, milestone for him. Absolutely. So yeah. Uh, I love how this movie is just self-contained. Um, it does uh, call back uh, just a little tiny bit uh, to uh, Broly, uh, the last movie. Uh, he's in this uh, too with Goku and Vegeta. Um, training. Really, Broly? Yeah, yeah Broly's uh, Broly's in superhero. Uh, he's training with uh, Goku and Vegeta uh, with Bear and Beerus and Whis in their uh, dimension, but it's not for uh, very long. It's practically a cameo, but. Yeah, uh, I love how uh, it's self-contained and it's a fun time. A great anime movie. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Brooks, you're now on to me, number three. Um, this is going to be a little bit controversial. A little bit. Okay. Good. Um, it's going to be Glass Onion, um, a Knives Out Mystery. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Ryan Johnson... Yeah, he is a pretentious asshole, but he's a goddamn talented one. I mean, I like James Cameron. It, <laughs> how he orchestrated the story, so. and also even the the glass onion. I even did this in my own like review of it. The the glass onion has no layers, like Shrek says. Layers, onions have layers, ogres have layers, but that but the glass onion has no layers because it is hollow. Because you can glass. see inside it. Even if it was made up of several layers, it's glass. You can see right through it. I, I, I just love how definitely it was well orchestrated. It might not, it may be woke to maybe either a, the yes. minimum or maximum, but it is still a well done movie. I definitely do love the detective mystery. It keeps you guessing. And even though the villain is obviously a pr pretentious dick that. Is trying and the the black woman who's supposed to be the feminine hero gets the dumb, brooding, dumb, idiotic like rich guy who I heard was used, was an outgoing on Elon Musk. But <laughs> like I don't care honestly. I don't give a shit about any of this anymore. I don't care. <laughs> I just want the movie and I do love the elaborate gadgets that they made in order for this mystery to come apart and and of those subversiveness i mean i'm gonna say this that of course with any artist that ryan johnson is way better when he's done alone when he's not controlled by disney and someone else's story when it's just his own story i heard knives out was great before and i had not I seen it yet but I, thought it was I, I can definitely tell that at least with this one it's definitely his own thing. It's his own elaborate trick. And you can definitely tell, like, the subversive stuff, like, one girl who just, like, bashes the tr the, the, tr the, the, the the gadget open when everyone else had to solve it and got the letter. 
But also this one guy, who just random guy who could have been seen as a, a red herring or a villain, but he's just some random guy. And he was, like, sitting next to the main character, the, the detective, like, um, James Bond. And they're both having a they're both having a beer while the cops are arriving. Yeah, like, you mean, also uh, Daniel the climax that. again, like big explosion, like that was impressive. James Bond from New Orleans. Um, I've seen Knives Out. That was a fun mystery. Yes. <laughs> I got to see the first one. Okay. Yeah. I've got also, uh, hold on, Calum. Before you go, um, I, I forgot. Um, uh, two more uh, uh, qualities about um, Dragon Ball Super Superhero I wanted to say. Um, new animation, I wasn't sure about it uh, going into the movie, but as it went on, uh, I began to like it. Uh, and so I, I like the new choice. Um, also, uh, the fight scenes are masterfully done uh, exactly what you expect. So, okay. Right. I have. I have yet to see Glass Onion. Anyway, my number three choice, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. This is okay. a... I never heard of that. I, I wouldn't be I'm not surprised that about that. Um, this is uh, based on this book made by a British author named or British illustrator named uh, Charlie Mackesy. It started off with him just making these ink doodles on Instagram with these inspirational quotes by them. But then it eventually became this whole book be called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. And the premise is and, and they've just recently made a ver an animated adaptation of it. Um, it's about half an hour long, and uh, people in America, if you subscribe to Apple TV, you can watch it for yourself. Mm. Um, oh, I think I may have heard that. Yeah. It's uh, now in my mind. I've, I've heard that it was on BBC iPlayer as well as um, uh, Apple TV. I've got a Canadian friend who really wants to see this film. Um, so um, the premise of the story, it's very, very simple. Uh, the rather self-explanatory titular characters are trying to get home, and that's it. That's that's the premise. But everything else about it is just so beautiful, so optimistic, and so insightful. Uh, you just, I just can't help but love it. Um, my only f uh, gripes with this animated adaptation is that some of the uh, the quotes that they do are kind of come out of nowhere at times in conversation. So in that regard, the book format could work a bit better than this animated adaptation because in the book you, it's implied that they've been on this journey for some time so the, the, it, of course they would say this as they were going along um, but uh, I, I can see other people making that complaint but that's the only major flaw I can think of with this film it's a re it's really beautifully animated um, some of the ways they've storyfied this particular story makes sense for this adaptation uh, giving more distinct arcs to particularly uh, the mole and the fox and in some regards the boy um there's more of a definitive destination to reach um i think there was these two events within the original book that have been switched around for the sake of uh, good pacing and i think it was a wise choice given the um the adaptation it's really wonderful and um <laughs> It actually made me cry by the end, and it made a lot of people cry as well. So there you go. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. It's half an hour long. It's a beautiful animation. If you get the chance, go watch it. You can thank me later. Uh, yeah, I know uh, Belle also made you cry, so... Yeah, Belle made me cry as well. <laughs> I think, okay. yeah, one, one, pun, one piece red, red film made you cry. Oh, really? Uh, Okay, so I'm going to move on with my number two. Yes, number two. Yes, number two. Okay, yes. we're getting into the heat of things now. Um, my runner-up, uh, second best uh, movie I've seen this year. Again, uh, it's not out on video yet, but it will be very soon. Uh, just falls just so close. Um, we're in the end game now. What? Uh, uh, okay. Um, I, for some reason, when I first saw this movie in the theater, I was very conflicted on it. And for an even weirder reason, I kept falling asleep. Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with me at the time. Uh, maybe my my theater chair was just that comfortable, but <laughs> my mind kept just kept uh, uh, piece, trying to piece together the plot line uh, too much. When th it was, uh, I just rewatched it on HBO Max recently, and I realized it's fairly simple. So. I'm just at a loss for what happened to me when I uh, first saw this in theater. My number two uh, pick is Black Adam. 
Oh. oh. Yeah. So, uh, I've I, I, uh, so on rewatch, I've uh, settled uh, my thoughts for it. I I really like it a lot. Uh, how it's an anti superhero movie. Uh, an anti hero. Yeah, anti superhero. Uh, anti. Super anti hero. Super anti hero uh, movie. Um, it's, uh, the Rock uh, kills it uh, in his performance. Uh, it's been called uh, dry and pale, but I, I think it uh, fits the character very well. Uh, I mean, he's uh, he's. I, I think everyone's just used to seeing him uh, be in such a good mood uh, that uh, he when he played this badass character, uh, they were turned off. But I, I think it uh, really made sense for him to act this way. So. I uh, think he uh, nailed the part with precision. He signed up to uh, for it to do it over a decade ago, so he's uh, obviously thought about it a lot. And uh, Warner Brothers and Discovery finally uh, got their shit together and released this thing. Um, yeah, uh, the plot line uh, is fairly simple, but um, I, I I liked it, uh, especially the end with the plot twist when. Um, Basically, the the devil himself appears, and to try and uh, take over uh, his country of Kondok, uh, uh and the world. Really? Yeah, it's uh, it makes for a, a fantastic ending. I, I did at least love the ending in the theaters the first time I saw it. So yeah, I, I'll I'll admit the stuff with the uh, JSA. Uh, it doesn't really uh, fit in well with uh, the whole multi. Uh, uh, multi movie, uh, the shared the shared universe of the DCEU. It, it it does it is kind of confusing. I'll admit, but I, I, I'm not looking at uh, at it like that. I, I'm looking at see just Doctor Light. Yeah, uh, Doctor Fate. Doctor Fate. Oh, I love Pierce Brosnan's uh, portrayal of him. Uh, it, it was he did a great job. Uh, too bad he died. Um, Adam. Uh, but I I I figured uh, I figured out if. Uh, how to enjoy the DCEU movies, uh, a little more than uh, Marvel movies, in fact. Um, because you'll notice uh, there's no MCU movie on my list, or any of our lists. Yeah. Yeah, a bl- uh, yeah, a Black Panther. Or um, Love and Thunder, I am not seeing you. Yeah. Uh, you how know. dare you make a genocidal maniac hand into a freaking ice cream shop? Yeah, that was pretty fucked up. Um... Okay, but anyway, anyway, uh, so how I uh, enjoy, uh, I just just watch each film on its own merits. Stop trying to uh, connect it to the uh, inner um, uh, multi-movie uh, shared universe thing. Just uh, in, to go with the flow, enjoy uh, each movie on its own merits. So, uh, and that's how I in, uh, enjoyed um, uh, Black Adam. There were a little too much uh, things where I had to, you know, just go with it. But uh, overall, I had fun. Um, uh, the, I, it was the kind of movie uh, Marvel would not make, honestly. I mean, uh, with uh, a villain. Like, they never gave uh, one of their villains uh, their own uh, movie. Uh, sure, Loki has a uh, TV series, but I, I never saw that. It's Morbid Time. In this movie, and no, oh. also Hitler and <laughs> Ice Cream Shop. Since we are talking about World War II with... With um, with yeah, all is silent on the Western Front. Maybe there should be a Hitler shop, Hitler ice cream shop there too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, I do love. Um, yeah, We're I gotta do get into fascism here too. Fascism ice is not- cream yeah. with Hitler. Uh, well, yeah, that's uh, kind of uh, uh, what that was. Uh, they they, they kind of what they did with uh, uh, infinity <laughs> tones. Um, but yeah, uh, just a quick note. I I, I do love the the Venom movie. Morbius was the worst movie I've all year. Morbius is my number one worst. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I got into the comics for Morbius. I got the comics for Moon Knight. Oh, uh, did, did you like oh. the show? I didn't watch the show because I just knew that. I just I read the comics and I saw the clips. And I knew that this isn't gonna be the, what I'm gonna. So I'm not going to bother with it. Oh. So well, in closing, uh, uh, Black Adam uh, deserves uh, its uh, warm reception it got from audiences. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, I remember when it closer came out, uh, it was advertising its audience score and just saying hush hush about its critic score. So, <laughs> it's, it's a smart move. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was. It's a true uh, badass uh, anti-hero movie if there ever was one. Uh, anti. The, the kind only only DC can deliver, quite frankly. Yeah. All right. Like DC. Now like my you. number two. Um, and remember what I said about fascism? I was not lying one bit because this second one is Pinocchio, the <laughs> the Guillermo. Okay. Cool. Guillermo del Toro one. Yeah. I, and. It is now Mussolini ice cream. At this time, not in the ice cream of shit. That Pinocchio <laughs> did duty to him, which I know is a bit immature, but that's why this is number second. So, he's a kid! <laughs> I know he's a kid, but that's why this is number second again. It's still fantastic, but yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, Pinocchio, yeah. This is definitely better. The best Pinocchio we've got uh, in yeah, the And the best he Pinocchio we've got all here. Oh. And I never thought I would say that because I had no care for the character. I mean, I like the Disney classic. I liked it, but I never loved it as much as this. So, it, I love the... You know how the, the Blue Fairy in the original is just oh, like yeah. the whole... The classic interpretation of the fairy where it's human? Well... Del, Del Toro, but but Calum told me once that um, Del Toro's into the pagan myths, and with the Christian theme of this movie, I think he also is diving into the Christian themes also because the, the the angels or the demons, either way, they definitely have that biblical accurate like angel um, look to them. The the blue fairy took the form that was similar to like the the seraphim. Uh, you might have not yes, be familiar with the eyes term. On the wings and like yes, eyes and, and the multiple the... wings like that are yeah. covering and their, also, their like, face. The and, demon, yeah. like you, it's either the angel of death, like she, yeah, like it's the form of lion, a sphinx, like a sphinx, like with wings mm. and like sort like of similar to like some medieval pictures of like revelations or something like that. Yeah. So um, this is way different than turning turning kids into donkeys. Like Tusk style from that, like from the Kevin Smith movie, it's literally, it's literally just like all, all the silent, all silent, all, all silent on the Western Front, turning kids into soldiers. So it's in that they turn them to animals. Oh wow, that's a great observation, actually. Yes, yes. It, it is, it is, it is like, but this time it's not for the German, the German Reich. This time, it's for the Italian right? the Italian fascists, which I have definitely seen Porco Rosso, which is oh, definitely, yeah, uh, it definitely Italian influence. It definitely is based on Italian like stuff. And um, it's not as heavily in the Mussolini as this is, but because they literally show Mussolini. Like Disney, if they did something like this, they would not have the balls to do because they would never do. Because yeah, we all know this. Yes, if they could this year, if they looked at Del, what he was doing, Del Toro was doing, they would not want any part of that. Yeah, but of course, um, having him they, all they winning, couldn't make a movie like uh, yeah, Del Toro right. and if they tried. Um, also, if anyone was wondering just now, uh, someone just uh, came in, into my room for but okay. I, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, um, okay. I do. Okay, I get even though I do find it a bit strange, right. even though that's a silly thing. But I do find I do still at the same time do love that that Pinocchio in this interpretation is an unfinished puppet. He's mm. um, all wooden, and he definitely when he grows, it grows like a tree branch. And he's also made from a pine cone, and it, he's definitely supposed to be the son that um I forgot his name. My Geppetto. Geppetto lost, and that. Um, well, you know, um, Jimmy Cricket is trying to guy's heart, and Ian McGregor. The, this was definitely the benefit from having to deal with another Disney product, Obi Wan Kenobi. At least this one, that he at least can actually feel happy doing it. Uh, Sebastian J. Cricket, yes. Yeah. So I really love the adult themes more. It's just more darker, and also Pinocchio dies. I mean, it's Several not like times. he commits suicide. It's like he's immortal. 
and he has to give up there's immortality. And just like all Western Front, that he has to face his father's death and Jimmy Cricket's death and also his own mortality. Give up on your dream and charge your death. And even the monkey. Yeah. And the monkey, yeah. They're like, and also the villain, it was like a, a combination of the fox and the circus, like the combination. Um, and also played by um, played by Christoph Waltz. I, I was talking about Chloe's passage over here. And I, I thought he did a great performance. I just, I thought it's, it's the commanding, mischievous, mischievous, like, churchster, like, like, former person. I forgot the villain's name, but I definitely did enjoy it. And also how it is to a T following the Pinocchio lore, except for the suicide part. But I do love that it's still faithful to it. And this, to, I understand the Passion Project, Del Toro, trying to get this out for a while. And I am glad that he got it out to this extent. Oh, yeah. Pinocchio by Guillermo Del Toro is also my number two pick. And, um... It- and honestly, it might it might be one of my favorite stop motion animated films ever made. My top favorite stop motion animated film being Cooper on the Two Strings. Um, this particular film is very ambitious, and um, and leave it to Guillermo del Toro to give us a film that's uh, very ambitious with uh, its themes. A lot of people might say it gets a bit too carried away by the themes, but no, I'm, I'm into that sort of thing. <laughs> what themes are better? But yeah. it still has to have substance. Yeah, yeah, still, mm-hmm. still gotta have substance. Yeah, it can't be style uh, over substance. I think that's probably what Avatar: Way of the Water was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but, the I mean, water that's tribe. Mistake, but uh, seriously, Avatar: <laughs> Seven, Avatar: Legend of Korra. What the we're, fuck does this even mean? Like, we're, would you we're talking about James Cameron. The name. James Cameron. We're talking about James Cameron's version. Yeah. Uh, no, he, but uh, it's almost how derivative he is with that. I, oh. I saw I saw that film in 3D, Cameron, by the way. That was great. Uh, Cameron can't help himself uh, with sinking boats. He does it again in, in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's also a, a boat in this movie, a uh, Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, well. um, they the Warren tribe in that, didn't they? Um, there's a few flaws with uh, Gilmo Del Toro's Pinocchio. Like, um, it, it's meant to be a musical, but um, not all the musical numbers are exactly showstoppers, with, the, with some no, exceptions. It's like still, Some musical elements, but mostly it's not. Uh, there was uh, the exception, like Chow Papa, that was great. Um, and in the second half, they kind of ditched it until the end credits, uh, the whole musical aspect. Um, and um, maybe some TV would be a bit confused, but uh, I just love how just balls to the walls this, this movie is. And I want more films like this that are animated. And honestly, the fact that... Uh, yeah, yeah, like, like that. Um, the, the, the fact that this uh, this is stop-motion animated makes thematic sense for Pinocchio. Like, what better way to make a story about handmade yeah. puppets than with handmade puppets? And um, there's sense. some... Yeah, 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 it makes sense, yeah. And um, I, if you thought that wasn't impressive enough, Netflix even released a behind-the-scenes footage where they literally made, like, different-sized models of the characters just to get specifications on certain scenes. Like, they made, like, a, a massive-sized Pinocchio head just so they could, like, properly animate, like, Sebastian J. Cricket for some parts. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's how dedicated they are. in hard copy with even more special features. Wow. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. there's some other... Uh, and a friend of mine pointed this out to me, like, uh, I, 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 partially, but something I've realized is that the casting, even though it's an all-star cast, they're not really cast in roles that you would typically think they would be cast in, which makes for some, gives them a chance to experiment with more wide-range acting. Um, I think it was David Bradley is who plays Geppetto. He's the, the old guy. He's from uh, Harry Potter. He's also that the... Um, uh, the old guy from Hot Fuzz. He no, plays. Oh Hot yeah, Fuzz. he's. Simon Pegg. Yeah, he's Basil. <laughs> yeah, All right. No, not Simon Pegg. Uh, the old, the old guy. Um, but something no, no, else. Basil, that... you know the guy who's like was friends with with Stephen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Steven anyway, uh, I also found I also found out that <laughs> um, Kate Blanchett. Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kate Blanchett, um, who plays Lady Galadriel in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you would expect her oh, to play like, yeah, yeah. She, uh, you see her listed with Tilda Swinton, and you think, oh, she must be one of the uh, Blue Fairy characters. 
but no. Does Kate Blanchett and Ian McGregor have a both in common that their characters are the bastardized? No, no. I, I kid you not. Kate Blanchett plays the monkey. I'm not kidding. That's actually true. Yeah, monkey. What? Yeah. That's Kate- the monkey. <laughs> Yeah, that surprised me too. You'd think she was cast as one of the fairies, but no, Kate Blanchett's the monkey. <laughs> yeah, that astonished me too. Her voice fits. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dumbfounded. I'm not that. I'm just dumbfounded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was great. Um, I guess um, some bits of the... Um, uh, maybe some of bits of the pacing of the film could be uh, fine-tuned a bit. There was a few plot holes, like uh, there's a scene where uh, uh, the... Mussolini, a guy says, "Do you are you afraid of the enemy?" Pinocchio says, "Aha!" And the boy says, "No, sir." Pinocchio says, Mm-mm. "And I thought, isn't that a lie? His nose should be growing." <laughs> and there's a few other inconsistencies like that. But apart from that, honestly, great film. I recommend watching it. Anyway, number one. Here we go. Okay. Um, before I get to my number one pick, um, I actually uh, when you guys mentioned Netflix, I just remembered um, one more film that I guess is an honorable mention or could potentially could have been my number five. I just completely forgot about it um, be, uh, because it's on Netflix. It, it, uh, it didn't get a hard copy release. Uh, I'm, I'm still holding out for it to get one, but... but Hold out for you until the end of night. Yeah. Uh, remember we watched Bubble together? That oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 guess, I guess that should be an honorable mention. Uh, I it, guess I'll mention all now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll mention uh, to that. Um, but when I make my uh, definitive uh, uh, version of this video for TikTok, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll go back and uh, revisit Bubble a little bit. Maybe it could be number five. And stay tuned uh, at Winning Charlie. Check it out soon. Anyway, number okay. one. Okay. My number one best movie I've seen all year is... I'm not Carver! Bullet train! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this and Black Adam are really the only uh, movies that uh, uh, kept me on the edge of my seat. And this I didn't need to rewatch. Um, uh, when I first saw this in the theater, I, I was uh, uh, like a kid in a candy store again. It reminded me uh, why I uh, love storytelling uh, so much uh, with its uh, complex plotline uh, characters I can all root for um, uh, and are a blast to watch. Um, uh, the, the comedy uh, elements are even uh, pretty funny too with how uh, a ladybug uh, basically stumbles uh, through uh, the action and plotline uh, getting by on his uh, uh, dumb luck uh, and it, it just uh, it, it's also a uh, wonderfully done um, a brilliantly told story. Um, I, I would expect uh, nothing less from the director of my 2018 favorite movie, Deadpool 2. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, and that twist ending uh, uh, when the White Death re- reveals just blow me away. Uh, Ryan uh, Reynolds the rest of the killed I, his wife instead of... Yeah, uh, it, it was uh, just as good, if not better, on the rewatch. Um and just one final uh, note I want to say about um, this movie's controversy that it gets. I don't think it's deserved. Uh, I, I, I don't, the controversy uh, it gets is because, um, Brooks, what are you doing? Uh, what was he? He's getting a sword out. <laughs> Jap- Japanese themed, I guess. Hey, that's, uh, that's oh. uh, the board head sword from okay. Demon Slayer. Okay. So the controversy, controversy, uh, bullet train got was that, um, uh, 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 it was, um, uh, like disavowed, uh, how, uh, it didn't take play, uh, it didn't, uh, star, um, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, actors, uh, and actresses, uh, even though the movie took place in, um, uh, Tokyo, Japan. But, um, I, I, uh, I say, uh, I defend this movie as uh, like it's a uh, director and uh, I think um, writer of the source material uh, because 
I say uh, there's a word for uh, wanting um, to see just um, people of the same race uh, uh, from in a movie that takes place in the same country. It's called nationalism. And I, I say that's bad. I, I, I would argue that this movie has a very diverse cast. And that's why a, I got that guitar out. So yeah. Japan, so okay. I, uh, white I guy? Japan, don't Black lie. guy? Um, I think British or... Uh, British, I think British guy, uh, British girl, uh, Mexican guy, uh, Japanese guy, and I think black girl. I think all in the Japanese oh, setting. Yeah, but they're, the, all, the they're, they're all assassins and they're uh, all super killers. Or uh, Hispanic or something. I'm not sure, but a- anyway, uh, I, I just uh, of the races I just listed off, only one black guy. I, I oh, only one white guy. And I, I, I would argue uh, uh, a diverse cast is even better than an all Japanese cast. So that's my bottom line. And uh, then you uh, uh, pile on uh, the great action the storytelling. You can't piss uh, off the liberals with that, at least. And, uh, all, all Japanese cast. What? You can't piss off the woke people, the woke liberals, with just well, the Japanese cast, at least, if it's all, if all Japanese. Well, as a... I'm just saying. I'm just... I'm not saying act. I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I think the uh, people uh, who criticize this uh, need to think a little more critically about it. Uh, uh, Diversity... Racially, uh, they have different stuff than just our stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I I guess. But uh, I I argue that uh, uh, this was uh, the right call. Um, And... I love it. It's the best movie I've seen all year. I saw it back in June, I think, and it's freaking incredible. Uh, I, I really would love to see uh, more movies like this, uh, or at least told uh, in this uh, like directing style uh, with the uh, characters that are funny re- and relatable, and uh, just uh, the to- uh, storylines told non- in a non-linear fashion. So that's my number one. All right. All right. My number one favorite movie of 2022 is Top Gun. I can't, I can't, I can't hide it. I, 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 I would love to see that. I would like Pinocchio, something that's less obvious, but it's the duty one that just keeps it off the number one because this is near well perfect. It really shouldn't be in this year, it shouldn't even be, it should exist. It but shouldn't it even be it, good. It, it, I mean, it, it, like, I, I respect the hell out of Tom Cruise, and I respect the hell what he did, and even my Top Gun essay about persistence, I definitely try to get that out as much as I can, inspired by that, even though it wasn't as I envisioned it to be, but at least I got out anyway, and even though I would love to maybe make a remastered version of it in the future, but I'm glad I got it out anyway. And it also helped me got some flavor into my channel, like helping me more realize the identity of my own channel. So right. and helped me got through some hard times. And it really does have some themes like collectivism versus individual. Even like like Rooster's patch was like, don't tread on me, even though he's a very altruistic person. So it really does have that theme of the modern collective versus the past individual, which, in truth, it's all for guys, you know, the guys. Yeah, but yeah, guys, guys, don't try on me. Very does. It doesn't exist. It's not even to try. It's not fucking real. Objectivism. It's not real. It's just fake. It's the individual. It's just you. The collective is just you because you're a collective of stuff. See this whole societal bullshit. Okay. And that's why Top Gun doesn't give a shit about any of that. It it goes through that, but it's not afraid to talk about it. Oh, wow. And I definitely love that Tom yeah. Cruise's Maverick, Maverick Pete, Pete Maverick Mitchell is not treated like Jake Skywalker or Obi Wan Kenobi. He's treated like the same Maverick you left off like forty years ago. And even though he looks older, and you're more associated with Mission Impossible, which honestly. I love more this movie more than the Mission Impossible movies altogether. 
Even uh-huh. six, which is my favorite, which is the best of all, even though it's a bit more cliche. This one feels so much better than all of them combined. Well, uh, yeah, I, I didn't see it uh, because I, I never saw the, the original, but I got to check them out. I you don't have to see um, the original to get in order to get yeah, you don't, this one. You don't. And it does definitely recapture why cinema does matter. It definitely that conservative like appreciation of culture. And I'm not talking just conservative of political. I'm talking about conservative of the past itself, which the modern day is trying to destroy the past or cling towards it. You know, like Ray and Kylo at the same time. It's trying well, to evolve. Well, 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 well. Tom Cruise is right. trying to cradle it, trying to pers- 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 No, it's trying to preserve it, like keep it alive. You know that feeling of when you go to cinema and when you see a movie and you see like real jets, real practical. Stuff. As much as I love CGI, much as I hate those people, like. The honest show guys who keep complaining about CGI is horseshit and it's ruining modern cinema. I agree to an extent, but I disagree to a certain extent. Because hmm. I I'm definitely sure. love the practical effects. I love the real jets, the real G G Force energy, the real F 18s And I like to have and I love the F twenty twos, the F the Su Su the Su fifty sevens, like the jets, like it definitely feels real, and none of this needs to be completely CGI at all. There's like limited of CGI, and the Dark Star, like the Mons exists to Blackbird. I love the progression, the progression of technology. What a piece of work is mine! How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, form and moving, how expressive and admirable in action, how like an angel and apprehension, how like a god. I'm sure, you don't see yourself like that, do you? I see this one day coming back to you. And you know what? You say either you're wrong. And that's my number one pick of this year. Nice. All right. And um, uh, conservatism uh, doesn't uh, always uh, just mean uh, like uh, bringing back uh, feelings of uh, nostalgia. It's hmm. um, uh, bringing back saying nostalgia, the- at least keep some stuff, like practical yeah. stuff. Don't completely destroy it altogether. Oh yeah, uh, keep uh, keep the good stuff. Uh, yeah, w- uh, honor honor the honor what oh. deserves to be honored. Uh, okay, Tom, you up? Yeah, of course. You have one guess as to what my number one favorite is. Yeah. The same as mine. Yep, same as yours. <laughs> yeah, honor honor the past. Uh, I'm American. I'm American. Honor the past while still uh, <laughs> making it good for t- 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 for today's audience. Uh, okay, uh, go, Callum. Sorry, had to get that yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I don't have not much American. time. Yeah, I, I'm not even American, and I love this film. <laughs> this film has no right, no right, to be as good as it is. Like, when you first hear the concept, Tom Cruise in a modern Hollywood reboot of an old franchise. That just spells failure, but Tom Cruise is not most men. He's very dedicated to his practical effects, and... um He's very dedicated to that, and I wouldn't have thought that Tom Cruise would have been associated with uh, a, mas- a near masterpiece film, but here we are. I didn't expect this film to be as good as it is, but this embraces all the virtues that people have been yearning for a long time now, and and it w- tells a good story, and and no one is degraded, and everybody is equal in this, and um, even though. Um, this film is not exactly perfect. Like, um, Maverick's relationship with the lady wasn't really fleshed out that much, but there's an implication that... Anomaly Inc. said she should have been saved at the end, some girl that he came up with, and she just, like... Okay, so... That, that only kept there, that scene at the end, mm-hmm. not, like, where she... So you're... Yeah. It's also Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, my favorite is also Top Gun Maverick. Um, there's a few <laughs> flaws in this film, to be sure, but honestly, it's... It, it, it's amazing. It's the best film of the summer, and uh, I actually saw it two more times with a few more people, and it's not just for the sake of it being an awesome movie, but... Hell, it was still in theaters more, all the way probably to now. Yeah, it, it, it got re-released. Yeah, re-released. How many movies Marvel, get re-released? They have a Marvel movie that continues. They have a non-Marvel movie that has done that. Just let that sink in. Let that sink in. Yeah. Um, okay, I gotta see it. Um, I really gotta see it. 
I yeah. don't have much time, so uh, that's all I need to say about it. <laughs> all right, you got all you uh, wanted off your chest? Yeah, oh, pretty much. Okay, yeah. and with that, um, we're going to go ring in the new year um, uh, with um, uh, right just off the top of my head, uh, the two movies uh, coming up soon uh, I'm, I'm excited for, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and um, Super Mario Brothers movie. Yes! Yes! I'm looking um, forward to that movie. Mushroom Kingdom, here <laughs> we come. Um, so, um, I definitely can't wait. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely optimistic for the Super Mario, sorry, Super Mario movie. But what I, I'm a little bit pessimistic, a little bit optimistic. Transformers: Rise of the Beast. But what I cannot wait for the next summer, like. like um, let me collect my thoughts. Um, so, um, what I cannot wait for next summer. I mean, like, just I, I, I forgot. Just um, I really need to get going soon. <laughs> okay, just wait. Um, so, um, what I cannot wait for next year is what I cannot wait. Um, I, I'm looking forward to the Oppenheimer film. Um, oh yeah, Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The um. And also, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. James, James Gunn is talented. What about you, Callum? Uh, quick right fire here. Um, uh, uh, movies, uh, a few movies you're looking forward to. Super Mario Brothers movie. Maybe Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I think June Part 2 is coming out this year, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Well, you know, what's the status on that? I'm not a fan, uh, but shouldn't, shouldn't we be getting it soon? Uh, uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to the movie either way. Anyway, I really need to get going. <laughs> Thank okay. you, guys. All right, yeah. At least that's James Gunn, Game Guards Galaxy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Finish the recording. Happy New Year. See you around. Happy New Year.